Saint Maud is a psychological horror film about a reclusive young nurse called Maud who goes to care for her newest patient, Amanda, um, who's a retired dancer who lives by the sea and is dying. And uh, Maud develops this strange obsession with her. And she thinks she's a devout Christian and she thinks that God is kind of sending her secret signals. And she gets it into her head that she's been sent on a divine mission to save Amanda's soul. <laughs> been interested in the contrast between you know the sort of self that we all present to the world and walk around kind of pretending to be normal whereas inside it's like ah, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you never really know what's going on in someone else's head so I kind of I wanted to do a film that was pretty much set entirely in, in a woman's head and in the beginning I think God was a character and it was sort of a two-hander between God and this woman but then quickly I started wondering about like what else was going on in this woman's life and why why is her main relationship with this voice in her head and why is no one doing anything about it and, Sort of developed from there. I don't like talking too much about the ambiguity <laughs> in case because I what I like the I, that people don't kind of to more, it's not ambiguous, yeah to, so but I guess. To what I guess when I was doing it everything that's happening is is completely real and so important to like what I found what I really like about Maud found it interesting about her is just the conviction she has in everything so she just does everything yeah. feeling like this is what I'm supposed to do or is in a complete whirlpool and I thought yeah. those extremes are really interesting. I do, I do love Amanda, but I also, I would have played any part in it because I, I loved the piece and that for me, I just, I like to be a part of helping to tell a story. So this was a story I wanted to help to tell. The fact that I got to play Amanda, who to me is so fascinating, I, was an incredible bonus. Mm. What I really liked about um, Rose's script is there's lots of moments where it could have gone very differently had someone been kind or just understood or just not rolled their eyes at someone behaving not exactly perfectly and so I really hope that people do empathize and see that we're kind of we all have an it we all can have a positive or negative impact on everyone we come across and it's like our responsibility to kind of try and make those things positive whereas Maud is just she can't catch a break. There were um, drafts particularly with Amanda's character where Amanda was English and quite a lot older um, mm. and quite quickly I started to just sort of feel that it wasn't quite the right route to go. Potentially it could run the risk of the character becoming a bit sort of too theatrical or kind of slightly tropey and, you know, Maud's a young woman who becomes obsessed with this other woman and it made, it just sort of seemed to make more sense to go for someone who's like sort of close to her age and just kind of cooler and a bit more kind of natural and, you know, not sort of this kind of thing. Um, and then also the fact that they're... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that, um, that obviously Jennifer's American and more of it's Welsh and the whole film's set in this little English seaside town, mm. it just adds another little layer of kind of, of them both being outsiders. We met online. Ah, so now you have a menage a trois. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Maud doesn't like Carol. It's funny, I can't figure out if she's a bigot or if she's just jealous. You know she went sneaking behind my back to try to scare Carol away? To save my soul if I understand correctly. Excuse me. Don't run away, I'm talking to you. Maud is my savior, you see. She's been looking out for me in more ways than one, but you got a little carried away, didn't you? So what is it? Am I indecent? No, you're lost. I mean, some of my favourite films are like early Polanski films like uh, Rosemary's Baby and Repulsion and uh, particularly Repulsion, I guess there's some sort of um, sort of thematic and stylistic links. Um, Taxi Driver was really quite a big uh, reference. I sort of I think I remember just in like the really early stages of development, it was just with film four. And I think one of the guys there was a bit like, oh, I'm not quite sure about Maud and I tried to explain it to him a bit like, try imagining if Travis Bickle was a uh, English Catholic woman living in a small English seaside town. Not that we want it to be like entirely that, but you know, there's mm. a flavour of that kind of story. Um, and then, 
he got it. Yeah, then he got it. <laughs> it was kind of like, oh, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, so that's a couple of them. I think for me, I saw Lady Macbeth, and that was one, for me, I know there's probably lots of films like this, but that lots of it was a woman on her own doing mm. an extraordinary things. And that kind of was really helpful to watch that and see how kind of Florence Pugh, like, how much she did with when there was very little action happening, yeah. which that was for me really helpful to watch that. I did give you guys both lists of films yeah, to watch. Yeah, we watched them. Yeah, the persona was, was in, yeah. in my head, I think, that um, resonated uh, just with um, stillness and, uh, and amb like ambiguity. Kind of um, closed off sort of little inner world between just these oh, two. Oh, and Ingrid Go West. Oh, yeah, Ingrid Goes West. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that those, they were all of them were really useful. Ingrid Goes West is like now. Yeah. And I, I do feel that lots of... What this film is a very modern thing because she's experiencing loneliness when everyone around is like on their phones and connected, mm -hmm. and I think that that's makes it very off now. And some and Ingrid Goes West is so like that, and so much yeah. affects me so much more. I think because I can see myself scrolling through my phone that. endlessly forever, <laughs> and so yeah, that was really really useful. For me, I watched it and I was just like, oh my gosh, the costumes are wonderful, or oh, the lighting's wonderful, and like Ben Fordsman, our DOP, is so clever. And that, like, as an actor, I think I'm a bit ignorant to lots of the other work that goes in, and that was just such a treat, being like, mm. oh my god, everyone's <laughs> done amazing things with it.